Okay, welcome to Unit 5, Revolutions in Modern Physics, Quantum Mechanics and Special Re Relativity. Now in this unit we're going to be covering modern physics, which means everything in the past hundred years or so. And these, um, these two ideas, quantum and relativity, they're modern in the sense that they came around in the past hundred years, but they're pretty well established now. They are what we use on a regular basis. They're, they're not really that questioned. They are accepted as being the best explanation right now. Um, but there's, there's lots of interesting things going on in them, and uh, we're just going to take a quick skim over the two ideas, relativity and quantum mechanics. So to start with, chapter 11 is looking at relativity, and before we get into 11.1, which is how the textbook introduces relativity, I wanted to look at two ideas that I think are really, really useful. So this is 11.0, Intro to Relativity. The first idea here, I've labeled it space-time, and the idea comes from Reddit, from a user called uh, Corpuscle634. So if you're not familiar with Reddit, this is a website that has all sorts of discussion forums on it, and um, there's a whole range of sort of content, but some of the content is very scientific, very um, helpful, and uh, very, very well written. And so this comes from a, th um, a forum called Explain It Like I'm Five, where the goal is to explain concepts in very simple and easy to understand terms. So this user is talking about the idea of light and the speed of light. I do want you to read through the whole thing. I'm going to start. I'm going to read the first little paragraph here so that we're on the same page. And it says, everything, everything, by nature of simply existing, is moving at the speed of light, which really has nothing to do with light, and more on that later. Yes, that does include you. Our understanding of the universe is that the way that we perceive space and time as separate things is, to be frank, wrong. They aren't separate. The universe is made of space-time, all one word. A year and a light year describe different things in our day-to-day -day lives, but from a physicist's point of view, they're actually the exact same thing, depending on what kind of physics you're doing. Okay, and I've decided that I'm actually just going to read through this whole thing, because um, I think that might, that might be a good thing to do. In our day-to-day -day lives, we define motion as a distance traveled over some amount of time. However, if distances and intervals of time are the exact same thing, that suddenly becomes completely meaningless. I traveled one foot for every foot that I traveled is an absolutely absurd statement. The way it works is that everything in the universe travels through space-time at some speed which I'll call c for the sake of brevity. Remember, motion in space-time is meaningless, so it makes sense that nothing could be called faster or slower through space-time than anything else. Everybody and everything travels at one foot per foot, that's just how it works. Obviously, though, things do seem to have different speeds. The reason that happens is that time and space are orthogonal, which is sort of a fancy term for at right angles to each other. North and east, for example, are orthogonal. You can travel as far as you want directly to the north, but it's not going to affect where you are in terms of east or west at all. Just like how you can travel north without traveling east, you can travel through time without it affecting where you are in space. Conversely, you can travel through space without it affecting where you are in time. I'm going to stop reading this just for a second to talk about this idea here. We're saying that time and space are orthog orthogonal, which means that they're at right angles to each other. So it's just like how we have, um, if I have A and B, and they're at right angles to each other, then I can get the length of C. I can say that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so that works if you know A is to the east and B is to the north. Then we get C, which is to the northeast. But it also works if we say A, this is our direction. Let's just say this is all movement through space. And B is movement through time. And what we're saying here is that we are always, always, always moving at the speed c. Always. Everything moves at the speed of c. But that speed is split between space and time. 
So the larger that points towards space, the less it points towards time. So the faster we're moving through space, the slower mo we're moving through time. To the point where light, which travels at C, at the speed of light in a vacuum, um, light travels at C through space, that means it doesn't travel through time at all, from our perspective. Light does not travel through time because it is moving at C through space. That's why it can't have any mass. It, it explains a lot of things. But this concept explains other concepts we're going to look at, which are time dilation and uh, space uh, compression, these sorts of things. Because really the idea is that everything is moving at the speed of light, and it's just moving either more through space or more through time. OK. We're going to pop back down to our, um, our reading here, which we had left off here. So it goes on to say, you're presumably sitting in, in your chair right now, which means you're not traveling through space at all. Since you have to travel through space-time at C, which is the speed of light, though, that means all of your motion is through time. Right now, you are moving through time at the speed of C. By the way, this is why time dilation happens. Something that's moving very fast relative to you is moving through space, but since they can only travel through space-time at C, they have to be moving more slowly through time to compensate, from your point of view. Light, on the other hand, doesn't travel through time at all. The reason it doesn't is somewhat complicated, but it has to do with the fact that it has no mass. Something that isn't moving that has mass can have energy. That's, why e, that's what E equals mc squared means. Light has no mass, but it does have energy. If we plug the mass of light into m E equals mc squared, we get zero, because light has no mass, which makes no sense because light has energy. Hence, light can never be stationary. So E equals mc squared is for something that's not moving. Light can never be not moving because it has no mass, but it does have energy. OK, not only that, but light can never be stationary from anybody's perspective. Since, like everything else, it, it travels at C through space-time, that means all of its space-time speed must be through space, and none of it is through time. So light travels at C. Not at all by coincidence, you'll often hear C referred to as the speed of light in a vacuum. Really, though, it's the speed that everything travels at, and it happens to be the speed that light travels through space at because it has no mass. OK. So we're done reading that thing. And it's a way of looking at relativity. It's not the only way of looking at it. I find it very helpful to think about it this way. If it didn't help you, then that's just fine. Let's go to the next page. And here's one other thing that, that I wanted to look at to do with relativity. And this is the velocity addition formula. This was another thing that, for me, made the whole idea of relativity make a lot more sense. So Galilean addition of velocities. If you have a boat moving along at some speed v, and on top of that boat is a fly, and the fly is flying forward at a speed u relative to the boat. Well, the total speed for somebody sitting on the shore that they see the fly moving at is going to be, you just add the two speeds together, right? This, we, this was our relative velocity, so we looked at this in uh, the first unit. So we would say, normally, Galilean addition of velocities, we could just say s equals v plus u. If some object is moving at speed u on top of something else that's moving at speed v, we should just be able to add the two velocities together. So that's Galilean. That's, that's been around for a long time. That's how we add velocities together. But there's a problem with that. I'll write out the problem. If my car um, is moving at speed v and the light from the headlights is moving at C relative to the car. No, 
relative to the car, doesn't the light move faster than C? If I can just say that S equals V plus U, well, the light is moving at speed C away from my car. My car is moving at V, so I should just be able to add those two speeds together and find that, that my light is now moving at C plus V. It's moving faster than the speed of light for somebody that's sitting outside of my car on the side of the road. That is not the case. That's not what happens. And it shows that the Galilean addition of velocities is not true. It's not correct. Really, how we add velocities with relativity is this equation. S equals V plus U, just like what we saw above. But we need to divide that by 1 plus VU over C squared. And that's just how you add velocities that are in the same direction. Notice I took off the vector signs because this is just for velocities moving in the same direction. But that's, that's how velocities add together. It's not V plus U. That's not how speed works. Speed is not something that just adds together that way. It needs to add together in this, this slightly more complicated way. Because when you're moving at faster speeds, time is affected, um, space is affected, everything changes when you're moving at different speeds. So this is actually how speeds add together. And you'll notice here, we've got v plus u over 1 plus vu over c squared. And that is going to make some interesting things happen. We'll see how it works in the problems here. This says, Mr. Koopman's spaceship has a max speed of 0.8c. As part of a demonstration, he flies it past the school so that all the students can see. Part A says, Mr. Koopman fires a spatial torpedo forward at 0.5c relative to the spaceship. How fast does the torpedo move relative to the students on the ground? If we were just doing Galilean addition, we would say 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5 is moving at 1.3 times the speed of light. But you and I know nothing can move faster than C. C is the fastest speed that exists. So how do we do this? We use our equation. S equals V plus U over 1 plus v u over c squared. Now we can fill in some values here. So v was 0.8c plus 0.5c over 1 plus 0.8 times 0.5 times c squared over c squared. Okay, and this is, um, the C's are going to cancel out in a sort of a nice way because um, I've made my speeds in the first place relative to C. So let's see here. On the top we get 1.3C divided by 1 plus, and we've got 0 0.8 times 0 0.5 times C squared over C squared. So the C squared's are going to cancel out. So we get 0.4. So we get 1.3 over 1.4 times C, which is 0 0.9286C. And there we go. So that's how fast um, that torpedo is going to be moving. So it does not move faster than the speed of light. It doesn't even move at the speed of light. It will never quite reach that speed of light. So that's how fast that's moving. Now let's try light. Light leaves the spaceship's head headlights at C relative to the spaceship. How fast does the light move relative to the students on the ground? OK, we'll use the same equation. S equals V plus U over 1 plus v u over c squared. Good. And now we can fill in some numbers here. v is still 0 0.8 c. u is now just the full speed of light over 1 plus 0 0.8 
c squared over c squared. And we can do this here. We get 1.8c on the top over 1 plus, you see we've got c squared over c squared, 1 plus 0 0.8 equals 1.8 over 1.8 times c, which amazingly enough is just equal to c. So you see that light, it was traveling at the speed of light to begin with, it's traveling at the speed of light from any perspective. That will always work. And so that's sort of the amazing thing, is that if your speed is c, it will be c from any perspective when you add these velocities. So you can see that even if v and u were both the speed of light, both c, go with me through the equation here. We've got c plus c, so 2c on the top, over 1 plus c squared over c squared. So c plus c on the top, 2c on the top, 2 on the bottom. You get 2 over 2 times c. You can never go faster than the speed of light. So there you go. That is this, these introductory ideas I wanted you to take a look at. Um, we'll do 1.1 next, which looks at uh, a couple other important ideas.